Hi, welcome to Quiltinator.com. I'm Michelle Johnson. Today I'd like to show you how to put little diamond shaped squares into your three dimensional bow tie blocks. And if you'll remember, we set these with a with four blocks as a background that would kind of read solid from a distance. And I'm going to make a quilt and we're going to Put these together with some other rows and then set this uh, right in the right here in the center. I would put it here on the wall, but this was another design that I forgot to put up and it's kind of around the world. It's really cute. Yesterday I made a backing and I pieced together a batting. And then today I lay it out and I have miscalculated how much I needed. And basically I am two inches too short going across. Length is plenty fine. I'm going to go ahead and try sewing together a little bit and just see if that helps. If not, I'm just going to switch this to a five block instead of six block. This is the first block. This is another yellow piece that I'm putting in. Again, you're doing it just the same way, but this time this is the bottom of the block, not the top of the block. And I'm just lining everything up. And then I'm going to go from this side, and this does nest together. Luckily on this one. And I have a little bit of my yellow sticking out. I didn't line it up correctly. And that's okay. I'm just following the edge of the block. top of the block. Okay. So here's my first. And this row really is going to be the easiest. So we're going to treat it the exact same way. Or we're going to leave this open because we're going to treat it the same way with the second row and that's what we're going to attach it to. So now, this is the bottom of the block, making sure that our raw edges are laid in the bottom corner. And then you're just going to take your next block, and if you have a direction that it wants to go, Remember, this is the bottom and this is going to be the top, so that way you'll figure out which way you want to line it. I'm just trying to make, right now, my seams be opposite so they will butt right up together, or marry, or whatever they call it. Look at those. Raw edges together. And you're going to continue this for the whole row. And then I'll show you what to do when we're to the next point. So this is what I've done so far. The first thing I did was stitch, or I pinned the first row down after we sewed it. And then I sewed between an eighth and a quarter of an inch away. So that way it would be stable and the binding will 
cover this up. And then I pinned everything and I smoothed it out as I went and then just for a little, yes the cat wants you to see it too, for a little bit of um, quilting and stability, this middle seam, I just put the edge of my presser, or I mean the edge of my foot against it and then stitch down and all the way around each side. I ran out of bobbin right here and so I had to I had to bury my threads in. So I did the one side and I left this side and it is buried. I just have to trim it off. I wanted just to show you what I did. And then I added on the second row. Now, one thing I did not do as well as I should have was making sure that these, these pieces here, which is this row here, were, were pushed all the way to the end. These are done very well, but this did not catch the very edge and I did that on at least two of these so I'm gonna have to go back in and hand stitch these in and so that's the point I'm at now is putting on the next row so we have our flappy pieces which is the bottom of the quilt you'll remember this was the top and these were in each of the rows, or in each block. Then we added this inset section. And then each, each block made a new row. So now this is where we're at. We have this block. And we have this block. We're going to do the exact same thing. It's going to be across one half of the block, because remember that's what size we cut them. They were all to be six inches. And so this six inch piece here, we're going to have the raw edges facing this one. And then we're going to take the first piece, lay it on, and then we're going to pin it together, making sure that all of them are lined up. And you're going to want to go back through and just reline everything up. Okay, so you know that this is the bottom, but now what do we do about this piece? because it's got to go in and the raw edges have to be this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to fold and this is it's only hard on the first one. You're going to take these pieces you're going to fold them in half and again you're going to fold it in half and you're going to make sure the wrong sides are touching each other. Now you have your second piece here and your first piece here that's folded in half. Then all you have to do, and hopefully you can see really well here how I'm laying this out, fold it in half and it's still staying in the same spot. You can see this, the green and the lavender. Because remember we're doing diagonals if we can with the color families. So fold in half, fold in half, then just fold it right over. And then you will easily be able to line up your raw edges. And 
This will be ready to seam in just a second. I wanted to show you how I'm keeping everything lined up because this is really bulky and it's very awkward since you have most of your most of the quilt right here. And this is the side I'm going to sew. These are the two blocks together and at the one end are the all the open raw edges going that way and then the center of the this the line is here in the center and the same thing on the opposite end and then the open ends open raw ends are down here at this end so I've got a pin on either side just to hold it all together and then three pins one at the center kind of where they join together where they're nestled in and then just one pin on each to kind of hold it together and you're going to need to remember to put your stitch length back to your normal length as you go back through here stitching at both ends. Now we have our four inset pieces. This is where I did not make sure that these, when I spread them out, that the end pieces were far enough into the seam to catch. So we have the next four inset pieces little flappies. Now what we want to do is we want to start in the center. And since I have five, this is the center of the third one. And we're just going to put our hand underneath and smooth out, making sure there's no wrinkles. You're going to need to double check two or three times for each thing you do. And then we're just going to pin. Make sure you line it up, smooth it out, put it together. So now we have this one, and it has to be I want you to be able to see this. It makes a little opening. And we want to be able to pull and make sure the seam lines up. But you also want to feel underneath and make sure you've smoothed out. And here we pin again. But this is the part that I did not catch were these very little tippy ends in the seam. So this is where you're going to take extra care, try to smooth everything out evenly, and try to make, make this seam 
as flat as you can get it and as much of it as you can get in. So, smooth out in between the two pieces. Smooth out the bottom. Pin it down. And you may need more pins. And then just repeat on the other side and then do the next two over and then do your quarter inch seam then you're going to flip it iron it down and then increase your stitch length and sew over the top and quilt it down i wanted to show you how i quilt this as i'm going and um i sewed this seam on and then i went back and i quilted just one foot length away from the edge all the way around and I didn't really have to do anything because I had already sewn it down but then at the end I made sure I have tails and I'm tying them off so now we just have to make sure everything is smooth and if you need to go iron it you can you can see there was just a tuck there that I just smoothed out and since I'm just going to do this next I'm going to stitch one foot length away from this. The only thing I need to do is just do some pinning. You smooth, make sure you smooth out the bottom and then just pin. And then pin in every section, maybe a little more than every section. And you're going to do that all the way across and then quilt right around this and then you can remove these pins or if you want to you can still leave them I would just take them out and re-smooth everything so that way you can quilt around this one once again take it out put it down here and then quilt this side so that's how you do it and that way you don't have to just keep um, I mean it is just this amount of pins in each section but it's easier than having to pin a whole quilt and having to retie everything back down my cat really loves this quilt and she thinks it is hers so again, smooth out, double check the back. This time these seams, I really did lock them in really well. So that's good. And then all you have, all I'm going to do is stitch here, or pin, stitch, readjust, pin, stitch here, readjust, pin, stitch on this side, and then get ready to attach the fourth row. I wanted to take just a minute to show you how I deal with the bulk under my machine. And all I do is just pin it all the way down. This is a really thin batting, it's Hobbs. Just quilt every six inches apart. It is, um, I did it by a co-op and so a lot of our guild members joined together and we if you bought so many, you got a discount. If you bought a little bit more, you got a shipping discount. So we got a good price. This has lasted a couple of years. And it looks like it's going to last probably at least another year. Here is the almost completed project. All that is left to be done is the binding. This has been about nine months of work. So my five minutes at a time have taken about nine months and I had a little time off with some medication that I didn't get to sew but really my five minutes may have just been quilting that seam and that was it or pinning something together and sewing a seam you just do what you can do so I hope you give this a try I really love this block 3d bow tie is amazing and it's very versatile I'm Michelle Johnson Thanks for watching.
and getting back to quilting.